If you've ever had to shoot fresh coffee before, you probably know that it's not as easy as it might look to get that nice fresh steam from the coffee cup. You have to spend time on boiling the coffee, making sure it's still hot enough to give off steam when it's time to shoot, have enough to refill the mug when it stopped smoking because it got too cold, plus your model has to deal with hot coffee at the same time as acting. Which isn't always so easy and it can be pretty unpleasant if it goes wrong. That's why there's rarely anything in all the takeaway cups in, uh, in all your favorite TV shows. And that's why I often shoot without any coffee on set as well. And so today I'm going to show you how to add smoke or steam uh, to a coffee mug in post to make it look like there is actually something inside of the mug. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. If you're new to the channel, uh, my name is Chris. I'm a full-time photographer and videographer living in Sweden. Today we'll be adding some um, smoke or steam to uh, our coffee in uh, post in uh, Adobe After Effects. I was actually doing this the other day for a stock photography shoot that I did. Uh, I posted the photo here uh, on my channel a few days ago as well, where I was tracking the motion of that coffee mug. And I thought uh, this would probably make a, a good video as well. I can't be the only person wanting to, uh, to do this uh, to my coffee. Coffee. As I mentioned in the beginning, steaming hot coffee on a shoot can be uh, quite a hassle. I mean, that's why we always see people drinking out of what seems to be weightless takeaway mugs in all these TV shows all the time. <laughs> it drives me absolutely crazy to see this. I mean, why don't they at least put something heavy inside the mug? Anyway, um, I actually have a bunch of smoke and steam footage uh, that I shot myself that I use for things like this. Sort of like my own little private stock, uh, stock library that I can use whenever I need to. And I do recommend that you uh, do that as well. Uh, build up a library of uh, like effects stock footage uh, for you to use. And this steam thing is a pretty easy thing to do. Maybe I'll make a video on that uh, in the near future. We'll see. Let me know in the comments down below if that is something you want to see. Uh, how to film uh, steam on a black background and make it usable for you in the future. And you can just do it in your own kitchen. Pretty much, so it's it's easy. That's a pretty fun process too. You can shoot in different frame rates, so you have uh, versions for, for regular motion, for slow motion, and so on. Uh, but anyway, I'm getting off topic here. I do have a uh, empty uh, coffee mug right here, so um, uh, let's get a quick shot of me with this coffee mug that we can uh, add some steam to. All right, I think that's uh, good enough. Thanks to the uh, magic of editing, I already have this clip right here inside of After Effects. So let's jump in and uh, take a look. We're in After Effects. I have my clip right here. I have my own uh, steam footage right here. So I'm just gonna drag our uh, coffee clip into a new composition. Here it is. And now there's probably a hundred uh, different ways uh, that you could do this in After Effects, um, but I'm gonna use, but I like to use Mocha, so that's what we're gonna do today. It's fast, it's smart, it's accurate. So let's jump up to Effects and Presets and type Mocha. Mocha A, and we'll just drag that onto our footage. Uh, it's gonna pop up here in our Effects Controls window. And we're gonna jump into that just by clicking the Mocha logo, and that's gonna open up a new window. Here we go. So I know that this might look a little bit intimidating at first, but um, we're gonna keep this simple. We're not gonna use most of these buttons. So bear with me. So with the playhead somewhere in the middle, cause the middle is always a good place to start tracking. I'm just going to go up to the pen tool right here and I'm gonna start drawing a mask around our mug. It's important that, that nothing moves in front of the item that we're uh, tracking. If uh, that happens, you will have to um, first track that thing that is moving in front of the mug before you track the actual mug uh, so that that thing doesn't disturb the track that we're after. But in this case, we only have to track the mug. All right, so when you're happy with your uh, mask, when that looks okay, um, I guess the most important thing is the top right here because the steam, we want the steam to pop up from behind there. So 
I guess this top would be the most important part to get as detailed uh, as possible. Um, the rest is just sort of for tracking purposes. But when you're happy with this, uh, you just hit the track forward button and uh, let Mocha does and just let Mocha do yeah, its thing. I'm just gonna stop it right here because we're about halfway uh, to the end of the clip and I can see that the track has sort of gone off and, uh, in all sorts of directions. I'm just gonna move this, uh, these track points so that they do sort of line up with the mug again. If you, had, if you hit the magnifying glass up here, uh, you get these boxes as well that I have. Uh, so you can uh, compare your first, first tracking point with the one that you're working on now. It's very convenient if you have to adjust the track. All right, something like that. And let's continue moving forward. I'm stopping again and just adjusting this mask a little bit, making sure it's at least the top is nice. Everything else is okay. All right, we're at the end. I'm just gonna adjust this here again. Something like that. I'm just gonna check this along the way. We sort of lose it here again because I move too fast. Just a little bit of an adjustment. Something like that. That is okay. Uh, let's go back to our first keyframe in the middle of our clip. And we're gonna track it the uh, other way, track it backwards. Again, stop and adjust the clip wherever, wherever it feels like it's necessary. All right, we're all the way in the beginning. Uh, adjust the track a little bit. Do one last check to see if everything is okay along the way. Final adjustments. Ooh. Let's move this one down here. That's better. It's a pretty fast workflow, I think. Remember to rename your track up here, especially if you're working with multiple tracks so you know, you know what's what later on. I'm just gonna name this one Mug. Easy. Uh, when you're happy with your track, just hit save. And you can just close this window down. Now I'm just gonna go down here and duplicate this clip. Uh, I'm also going to add a null object. Then click on your top clip in the... Uh, now click on the top clip on your timeline. Expand these two. Uh, so on the top clip, we want to create a mask uh, for the track that we created. So we're gonna hit this button, create After Effects masks. And as you can see, After Effects created a mask with keyframes along the track that we created. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a perfect track as we can see, but that's my fault for rushing this tutorial. Blame me, not the software. Then we're gonna go back to the effects controls window and hit create track data. Uh, it's gonna ask us which layer we want, and in this case, we only have the mug. And this is why it's nice to rename layers when you're working as well, so you know <laughs> what you wanna choose when this window pops up. So, uh, uh, so it's gonna be the layer with the cog in it that is selected. Uh, so in this case, it's the mug, we're gonna hit okay. Um, and as you can see, it created all of these uh, keyframes. As you can see, it created all of this uh, keyframe data that we now can use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to export options. We're gonna change this to transform and we're gonna choose our null object as uh, the source to export this to. Uh, we're gonna apply, uh, hit apply export. And as you can see, in the window here, our null object is now following this mug wherever it goes. 
hopefully well enough uh, for us to add the smoke on there. So now I'm gonna add the smoke uh, into our timeline. I'm just gonna drag this in here underneath the mug clip. Uh, I'm just gonna line this up so it looks uh, all right. You know, scale it, rotate it, whatever you have to do. Something like this. I'm also going to add a tint effect to this smoke layer. And that's because I want to make sure that the brightest parts of the smoke effect, in this case being the smoke, um, have the same sort of tone as the white, uh, the whites in our footage. So I'm just gonna hit this, and I'm just gonna use the mug as a reference, because that's the whitest thing we have in this, in this photo. And as you can see before, my footage was kind of more bluish. So this is gonna suit the scene a lot better. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen. And as you can see, that already looks pretty good. And now what we wanna do is we parent this smoke layer to our null object. So our smoke layer is gonna do whatever our uh, null object is gonna do. So it's gonna follow that around and move in the same way. I'm just gonna render this quickly so we can have a look at what we, at what we got. I checked that out, that's not bad, that's not bad at all. I think that looks really good. As you can see, there are some places where our, the edge from our track is a bit hard. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to this mask and we're just gonna increase the feather. Make that edge a little bit more realistic so it sort of just fades in instead. And you can also see that we have this edge right here from our smoke footage. Um, so I'm just gonna go in here somewhere and I'm just gonna create a new mask on top of this smoke layer. You know, something like this. And I'm just gonna feather that as well, quite a lot. Come on. <laughs> Uh, something like that. As you can see, that edge is now gone, that edge outside of the cup. Let's have a look again. <laughs> That's not bad. You can you can even see that the the smoke is you know being you know getting larger as we're getting closer to the camera. It's getting smaller when I move away from it. Um, and I mean, from here, it's sort of all about taste. Um, I mean, you can make it, um, you know, you can play with the opacity, maybe, you know, make it a little bit less visible. Um, you might even want to add some motion blur uh, to this since it's moving around, you know, since it's moving, since it's moving around quite fast, it might be nice to have some motion blur on this as well. Um, you know, just play around with it till you find something that works for you that you like. <laughs> I think that looks really nice. I'm super happy with this. So uh, I'm just gonna end the video right here. Let me know in the comments down below if you do want to see that video on how to shoot your own like smoke and steam stock footage uh, that you can use in your own videos. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you found it in any way useful. It is the, uh, it is the very best way to, uh, to help out the channel and uh, make it grow, so I'll be very uh, thankful for that. And of course, uh, subscribe if you wanna see more uh, helpful videos uh, in the future. And uh, with that, uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.